All right. So as previous, we've got the situation where we've got some sort of a charge emitter. We'll call it an anode cathode um, type of device. And actually, that's way th where the word cathode ray tube comes from, because there's this cathode charge emitter that fires charges out in between these two plates. And we'll call these guys the acceleration plates, because they get the, uh, the charge up to speed. And they're going to get the charge up to speed, as you guys told me, using the values that we knew, the voltage between the two charge plates, the distance between the two charge plates, the charge, this is Q subscript E for the, the particle that got put into the acceleration plates. Uh, we already said the R, the, the distance between the two plates. The mass of the charged object, so M subscript E, and the initial velocity of this charge, which we're going to assume in most cases to be virtually zero. We're going to assume that it sort of just evaporates off of this cathode uh, tip here and gets emitted into the gap. Okay, So at relatively low velocity, it gets emitted into the gap. At least it's low velocity compared to what the final velocity might be, which like would be 10 to the power of 24 or something or other meters per second. Okay, So very, very small, much, much smaller. So last day, we took some values that were related to this. We said that we had a mass for a charge of, uh, what was it, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. We said that there could be a gap in between these two charged plates. Um, what did we say the gap distance was? What was it? Well, maybe we'll just come back to that then. We get delta V, we said was, or the voltage rather, was equal to uh, 3.0 times 10 to the power of 4 volts. We said that the mass, or sorry, the uh, initial velocity was virtual, virtually 0 meters per second. We said that the charge on this thing, being realistic, would be about 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs, so an elementary charge. And we were able to use um, conservation of energy, so a negative change, or well, we said this was, had to be a negative value. Negative change in electric potential energy equals the change in kinetic energy. And by plugging in our electric potential energy change, negative Q times delta V, and our 1 half m v2 squared minus 1 half mv1 squared, where v1 would be equal to 0. This guy cancels out. We were able to eventually get v2 all by itself and find that the final velocity was equal to 1.027 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. OK? Yep. Sorry, what's the exponent on the mass? On the mass, the exponent is negative 31, 10 to the negative 31. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could call this part A. Part A, find the emitted velocity for a charge that's fired out from this acceleration set of plates. Okay, part B, maybe I'll differentiate with another co color. Part B, well, we can really start to treat it as a projectile motion. We could talk about having a steering plate. So if we have a steering plate, let's put that next in the sequence. A steering plate, as we discussed previously, might be able to steer this emitted charge up or down. Okay. So just for argument's sake, let's make the top plate be positive, just to really enforce that this isn't like projectile motion where gravity is the only force. We're going to choose up to be positive, and if we choose the, the top to be positive, what's going to happen to the direction for this parabolic motion? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to curve upwards. So, so just, to, just to really reinforce in our minds that, yeah, this is like gravity, but the source of the force is a little bit different. So we could enforce that it, it could be a parabolic motion upwards. Of course, we could change the polarity on this, make the bottom plate be positive and the top plate be negative, and then you get a para parabolic path that would curve downwards. But you know, if it can curve up, it must be able to curve down. And we're going to say that since this charge has such a small mass, the electrostatic forces totally dominate the gravitational forces, so we're not going to consider what gravity does to it. And you can do the math. You can check to see what gravity does to such a small mass. You'll find that it's negligible compared to the electrostatic forces, and really the gravitational force would disappear in the significant figures. It won't even be a, a major player. Yeah? Um, okay. The like, left side of the first plates is negative. Yeah. Then wouldn't the left side of the first 
No? OK, so the left side here is negative, so it accelerates away from the left side. Here, the bottom is negative, so it's going to accelerate from the bottom, which means it's going to curve upwards. Yeah? Oh, thank you. You're right. That should be a negative sign. Thank you. I, I said it in words that it was an electron, but I didn't put it in writing. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, so B. Let's find the... Well, actually, maybe we should write down some values just to make sure we've got it. We've got, maybe in terms of projectile mo motion, entering the two plates, V1x is equal to 1.027 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Notice that V1x for this projectile motion is the exit velocity from the acceleration plates over here. Okay, So we're getting our initial velocity from the exit velocity over here. And we're going to assume for such a small particle that no real friction happens between this point and this point to slow it down. Okay, It's not really impacting anything. It's just going to get in there with the exit velocity from the acceleration plates. And we're going to say that its charge hasn't stayed or hasn't changed. So Q is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs for this continuation. We're going to say that the electric field intensity, and I'm just going to give you this one. We could calculate the electric field intensity given a few values, like the R value and the voltage between these two plates. But we've done that before. So I'm just going to give you the value. Okay? The electric field intensity, we're going to say for, for this instance, is going to be equal to 100 newtons per coulomb. And if you want to look at the orientation, the orientation of the field must be down because it's from positive to negative. But I'm not, I'm not going to clutter up the writing with what direction that is because we can see that the field within these plates would be from positive to negative, oriented downwards. And the mass of the charge isn't going to change again. It's 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms once again. Okay, so nothing new there. Now the new piece of information that you need to know is that the length the length for these two plates, in other words, the distance between when the charge enters and when the charge exits these two parallel plates is going to be equal to 6.0 times 10 to the power of negative 2 meters. Now, people that are good with moving the decimal place around, how long is that in, in regular speak? Six centimeters. Six centimeters. I mean, that's reasonable, right? That's not a very long length. I mean, maybe we could have made it smaller, but. Six centimeters. That's a nice human measure. Um, what we could also call this is delta d x, because if we're thinking projectile motion, that's its horizontal displacement. Okay. So before we do anything here, thinking about this as projectile motion, my question within a question, I suppose, because we haven't really said anything yet, I would I want to use the part b to describe the para or the projectile motion. So my question within a question in describing the, the uh, projectile motion here would be, let's call it B subpart I, um, could be find the vertical acceleration for the electron. back here in part A. Mm -hmm. The charge is negative. Oh, you're right. I shouldn't have made that negative. I should have made the delta V positive. Mm -hmm. You're right. Sorry about that. Triple negative instead of positive. Uh, double negative. See, I knew somebody was going to catch a typo after it was all said and done. All right, I. We said once before that electric field is equal to the force that a charge might feel divided by the amount of charge that's actually present. And that was a few days ago that we said that, but I'd like to carry it forward, um, which means that I, I could rearrange this to get F equals electric field intensity times the magnitude of the charge that's present in the magnetic field, which means that since I know the charge that's present between these two plates, call them the steering plates if you like. Some, more, some other people might call them deflection plates, but steering plates, they're going to steer them up and down. We know the charge that's present, that's an electron. We know the intensity of the electric field. It was given to you this time, but you could have calculated it using some previous methods. We could figure out how much force is being exerted on this electron vertically. Okay. Um, we could just calculate it as force, but we're asked to find the vertical acceleration. Just as an aside, 
What's f equal to according to Newton? Yeah, why not? So we could sub that into this equation because Newton can't be wrong. Or can he? Well, he's not wrong in this case anyways. Um, mass times acceleration is equal to electric field intensity times charge. And if I want to know the vertical acceleration magnitude, I know the direction is upward, but the magnitude is electric field intensity times charge divided by the mass of the charge that's in motion. Okay, and I've run out of space down here. We can start subbing in some values and, and maybe you can beat me to it. See if we can find the acceleration, the vertical acceleration, maybe we could call it acceleration in the, in the y direction for this charge. Acceleration y, not acceleration g, because it's electrostatic. Oh, I've run out of space for units again. Anybody beat me to it? Negative 1.758 times 10 to the 13. Negative 1.758. Ten to the thirteen meters per second squared. Now you can get hung up on this negative sign. Remember, in this case, we really were only concerned about the magnitude. We know that one point seven five eight times ten to the power of thirteen meters per second squared is just going to be its acceleration in the upward direction. So, having our conversation back with the picture, knowing that it's a negative charge, it's going to get attracted upwards or repelled upwards by the bottom plate and attracted by the upper plate. We could just say that it's 1.758, or I guess we could stop at two sig figs, about 1.8. Well, let's keep on going unrounded. 1.758 times 10 to the power of 13 meters per second squared. And we could just say up. It, so an up arrow indicating that it's gonna accelerate upwards. You didn't get that? You should get that. That's about right. Now this is the acceleration. This is not velocity. So don't get hung up on the 10 to the power of being bigger than 10 to the power of 8. We're not breaking any light barriers here or anything like that. This is acceleration, not velocity. Okay. All right. I'm going to pause it there for 